Good if I had the speaker. Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV for another Chelsea news show for you guys. Been again a little bit quiet this week, hence why we've not been on too much again. I'm still waiting for the Clasado news to sort of heat up and pick up on that and any other relative news in regards to Chelsea. But we are going to talk about Dybala, Caicedo, Pulisic. Um, who else have we got to talk today? Levi Colwell, uh, Conor Gallagher, Trevor, Trevor Chalabar. Lots of little bits to go through today, actually. And in between all of this, we'll be trying to keep you up to speed with any breaking news that may occur as well. Quick favour, though, guys. You know what I'm going to ask? Smash them likes. We've got the panel coming in again. The original panel coming in again later later on as well to join us. So, guys, please share. It is so big and key that we keep sharing this out to as many people as possible. I hope you guys are all well wherever it is that you are. We'll be going through the chat in a second to say hello to every single one of you as well. But before we move forward, guys, let's cue that intro. <laughs> Yes, people, welcome back to GNA TV and Chelsea Fan TV for another Chelsea news show for you guys as well. Hope you guys are all well, wherever it is that you are across the world. Make sure you're smashing the likes, as I've always said as well. Lots to sort of catch up on, shall we say, in regards to Chelsea Football Club. So we're going to be doing that for today. I'm hoping that things are going to start heating up going into next week. Obviously, pre-season is round the corner as well, so we'll be going through that as well. Nearly 100 of you guys here already combined. So big love to every single one of you guys. 100 people nearly here already. So big love to every single one of you that are here. Uh, Ashraf says, check Pies. What's Pies said? Uh, let's go. I'm going to come through the chat in a second. What's Pies saying? What is the Pies saying? What's this? Uh, nothing to do there, but there's a little bit of some Kaiseido that we're going to go through that's just came out, interestingly enough. So that will go into the list of stuff that I've got to go through today as well. Uh, so that'll be uh, there. There was an interview taken with Moises Kaiseido. Um, just to keep you very briefly in it, which basically um, you don't really see much of it, really. It kind of gets cut out, but. Um, sorry, guys, I've gone quiet because things are happening. Things are happening, which I'm trying to put together with you guys. Keep running up the likes, guys. Keep running up the likes. That would be great if you can do that. I'm just, it's a bit, it's, it's just to do with Kaiseido. So I'm just. Um, just check in something. So, okay. So, interesting. So, I mean, there's not much to that. But, again, it's, great. it's, it's, it's relatively new because he's had an interview today with, I think, um, a report. I'm not sure where the report was from, whether it's Ecuadorian or whatever, but something so we'll come to that in a second big love to every single one of you guys that are currently here as well nearly 100 of you guys here let's go through the chat and say hello to every single one of you guys as we always do big up leo how are you my bro nice to see you gary says yeah we're going to get to pull a stick in a bit that's one that we will be talking about today um honestly i think 100 million is fair for kaisado better than rice is what ryan says we're going to talk about kaisado a bit later in the show as well ashraf why do people always call me when I mean, I'm like, you know, in these meetings. They never call me before. They call me when I'm doing the same. Apparently, Barlow is renewing media use, Chelsea's names to use to get up his wages. We're going to talk about the Barlow at some point today as well. I've done that. Big up to the Blue Lounge, Mo. How you doing, my brother? Nice to see you in the chat as well. Big love to you, my man. Greetings, everyone. Big up, Dell. Nice to see you, Nikki. Chelsea should have signed Kaiseido before the Rice deal. Um, potentially, maybe. I don't think that would have been possible because I think the Rice deal was a lot further ahead than the one that Chelsea are trying to do with Kaiseido. So it was always going to be harder for us to get that done. And obviously, I think Brian have played it quite clever. I mean, not for all fairness, so we'll get to that. Let's just pay the money, is what Akko is saying. Uh, Kaiseido is great talent and very good player. However, £100 million for a player that has had one good season 
in the Premier League is ridiculous. He's played two seasons in the Premier League. Two. Um, not one. Um, we'll talk about that. Matty has been waiting for this day. I, if you guys know May, I've known May for a long time. He's been waiting for the day that Christian Pulisic leaves this club. So the fact that there's, it looks like it's coming to the end of him moving over to AC Milan, which we're going to be talking about very soon as well. Um, yeah, I bet he's happy with that. Are you worried Caicedo takes so long? Good question, Ashraf. We're going to talk about that in a bit. I don't want to sort of start talking about it now when it relates to a bit later on. Pay the 100 mil is what we've got here as well. Come on, you blues from down under. Big up Pokemon World Australia. How are you, my brother? Nice. I always see you in the building. Told you you would be lucky to get 20 mil for Pulley. Well, I thought we would have should have got at least about 25, but it looks like we're getting around 19 million for him. So we're going to get into that in a second. Big up Sosa as well. Guys, nearly 150 of you beautiful people here. Nice to see all of you. Can't wait for biscuits to leave. <laughs> Oh, guys, you're cracking me out. So a lot of people agree in Christian Hunters, it's leaving as well is a great thing. Right, so let's move into the, the stuff that we've got to get on with today. Guys, keep smashing the likes as well. I'd massively appreciate if you could do that. Just a quick one on Asper Laquita. Obviously, he announced he was leaving Chelsea uh, yesterday over, over an interview. Very teary, very upset. I put up a tweet in regards to the player as well and said, well, you know, this is this is what you call a real legend, someone that's won it all at this football club. Um been a great servant but at the same time was the right time for him to leave right because we we all could all see that he's he him as a player was declining due to age but the one thing I would say about Aspilicueta as a defender over the years at Chelsea is I think he's probably been one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders that I have seen in the Premier League for a very long time his level of performances every week in his prime were unbelievable he'd always put an eight or a nine out of ten performance in um you know, anyone that didn't like Aspel I, I don't get it. I really don't get the motive of it, I'll be honest with you, because he was one of the legends and he deserves to be known as one of the legends of this football club. At the end of the day, he's won everything. He's one of the only players or the only player that has won every single trophy available to this club. So, you know, big love to Aspel Um, You always go down as one of the greats, in my opinion, of this football club. And has been a great servant. And that is, like I said, what you call a true legend. A true legend. True, true legend in Aspilicueta, man. What a player he honestly was. Honestly. We got Vic in the building. How you doing, Sosa? Nice to see you as well. You're Dan. Gary. Deals. What you saying, bro? Um, for the Wrexham. <laughs> big up to Deals, man. Nice to see you, my man. So, yeah, Aspilicueta. Big love, my man. Good luck to you. Your next move. He also said that he wants to come back to Chelsea and have some sort of important role at some point in his career after he finishes and retires from football. So let's see. Maybe Asper Laquita returning some sort of way to this football club further down the line. Big love to him. Nearly 150 of you guys here. Big love to every single one of you guys. I know it's a very hot and beautiful day today. So very hard for people to maybe be sitting at home today, which is fair enough and work. But we're going to move on to the captaincy quickly. And the captaincy role involving the news in and around Reese James. Reese James trained all summer to get head start before pre-season uh, began this week. His long-term ambition is to become Chelsea captain, which is still in sight. There's a column from Simon Johnson on that as well. Um, listen, I think with Reese James, and it might preferably work for him going into next season. The fact that he's not going to have to play as many games is going to be a, a huge importance to him and his fitness in him being able to recover fully. Because I always feel that when you come back from an operation, an injury, we've seen it with players in the past, and then you're thrown into every game of every week, twice a week, three times a week, like we've been doing, it catches up, you know. And the, 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 the good thing for next season is a lot of these players, even maybe you can throw in Kunku in this as well, because he's been in a, in a long-term injury. The fact that they've only got to play once a week for... A little while or most of the season um barring when there's cup games and um you know to be be on the training ground a lot more making you know strengthening their weaknesses in the gym training hard with potch which are we understand potch is going to be putting for a rigorous training sessions we're going to bring him up to a real standard and this is what we need right and you know potch was never really my first choice that we know this but in terms of 
what will he bring to Chelsea? I think he, like I keep saying, he'll bring an identity, a system. He will get them trained. He will drill them. And it's for the first time we can actually probably say we've actually got someone in here that that is a manager that they will have to take serious. That someone that will demand them to be at their best a hundred percent all the time. You know, and what we saw under Graham Potter and what we saw under Frank Lampard, I don't feel was that. You know, in many ways. So yeah, I'm happy for Reese James to be a captain. Yeah, about you guys, if Reese James wants to be the captain, I would be more than happy for him to do that. Providing he can keep himself fit and he's available and he's on the pitch a lot more than he is on the injury bench, then it makes a lot more sense. Ruthless, how you doing, man? Nice to see you. Um, I'm at, nice to see you as well. Who else we got here? Nixon, nice to see you. Isn't worth 100 mil. We're going to get to that in a second. It's a little bit more relating to uh, this. And it just goes to back to what we were saying in regards to Thiago Silva as well, because obviously... The moves or the noise in and around is that Pochettino will decide the new captain soon. There is a theory that Silva will get the nod with James as a vice. So, I think, I think I get that. Originally, I, I thought, you know what, Reese James as captain makes sense. But, at the end of the day, Thiago Silva's near, near the end of his, going to the near the end of his career. This might be his last season at Chelsea, right? And I think with Reese James, I think he needs to concentrate more on just getting himself as physically fit and ready and available and constant, right? And I think giving him a season to do that is probably the right thing to do. And then going into next season, if Thiago Silva leaves, Reese James is fully fit, ready to go. The, the captaincy then becomes available to him because he's available more. And that's the that's the only thing with Reese James, is the availability of him, which may hinder the decision makings, you know, of of maybe him himself. But everything else other than that. Reese James, I'd be fine with it. Um, question mark I have with Thiago Silva. How many games will he be, will he be playing next season to be a captain? Because if Carl Will's going to be there, Fafana's going to be there, you're going to have Badia Shile there. Obviously, there'll be a, a huge rotation. But will Thiago Silva be getting as many games as we think? You know, that's, that's the only thing I would say. But, you know... Again, how can you not have Thiago Silva in your team? I guess is probably one of the right answers to that as well. Vic says, Dybala, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, Todd wanted time to, uh, time to sign us and now see the drama. Wasted time. There's no, I, don't, I don't really get that, Simon. What do you mean, wasted time? I don't think time has been wasted, bro. Kaiseida uh, and Chua many is, is, is a no for Neo. So we'll see what happens at a later stage. 160 people. Big love to every single one of you guys. Guys, make sure we're running up these likes as well. Make sure we're running up these likes as much as we can. Share it out on your socials as well. We are flying through some of the news. We're going to get the pipe. We're going to get the panel in soon as well to go through everything with us. News in and around more players on the cutting edge is Conor Gallagher, Trevor Chalaba, and Callum Hudson Adoy. Now, the answer to that is that they're all expected to leave. I think you already know what I feel about Conor Gallagher. He has to go. Like, I just don't think he is good enough to be at Chelsea, from what I've seen. But at the same time, you can say that about most players. But I just don't see the qualities that he brings further up the pitch for Chelsea. I don't think he's very good in the possession-based team. I think he, he he is probably better off work being in a team that plays on the counter that um, probably doesn't have have has have have as much of the ball in terms of you know trying to break teams down, which is what Chelsea do pretty much mostly every week. Always possession based, do dominate most games going into each. Um, you know, get 40, 50 million for him, sell him on. Great, I would do it. Um, Callum Hudson Odoi, I would just let him go. You know, he was another one that had big praise, thought he was going to get somewhere, had that massive injury um, as well. And then he just, for me, he never really managed to find himself, you know, find that form in himself again, going into things. And I always felt with him that he was always playing with on the breaks. You know, you know, you know how good he is at dribbling, taking people on, but he would never do it. He would stop, go backwards, sidewards. So, you know, he was just, I just think he's not the player that I saw in the reserves. 
I used to watch play, bits of Colin Mustard where I was like, wow, he'd get the ball from the halfway line, he'd take on three, four players, put them on the floor, you know, one, twos, bang, go, you know, in goal. And like, I know it's reserves and whatever, but, you know, he never really found that form again, you know? Um, so if we've got to let Cullum go, it makes sense to me. I always thought he would go anyway. That's not a shock. And then there's Trevor Chalabar, who I'm a little bit against, to be honest, because he's the one player that I just feel that has... For as long as he's that, for as long as he's been at Chelsea for a very short space of time, I think he's done very well. And yeah, he's had moments. Don't get me wrong. And I think for us to not at least allow him to have them moments on the basis that he was just thrown in his team under Thomas Tuchel, none of us even knew, you know, and had a, had a great first part of the season, and then he sort of dipped off, and then he found it again. And then going into last season, I thought when he got um, called back into the team, I thought he was very good again. I think he's very underlooked. I think that. He is very good to have in the squad because God knows what you're going to do with injuries and whatever. I think you could utilise him in and around the back of the defence, whether it's on the left or right. You're going to play the back four. You might even be able to squeeze him on the right back, whatever. Like I just feel with Chalabay, he has the abilities to be a bit versatile as well. And I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not too... Well, I know we've got two of... We've got Chilwell and um, Kukurea and... Gusto and James, and that is great strength. We have got some serious strength in them positions now, and I get that. But in terms of having a player like him available, I just think I think we should really think about it, to be honest. Unless he wants to go himself, in my opinion. Unless he wants to go himself. Um, guys, nearly 200 of you here. Big up to every single one of you guys. Make sure we're smashing them likes, so guys. Get the likes up. Come on, let's drive them likes up as quickly as we can. Hey, who can get to 100 likes the first? That's the big question. Who can make it to 100 likes the first? Under Sarri, he was good. The injury robbed. Yeah, but it's just the same thing as Ruben Loftus' cheap um, couch. You know, same issues. Um, you reckon Chalabur might go out alone? Maybe. Maybe that's a better option rather than just selling him. I don't know. I've just always thought Trevor... I just always thought Trevor is, is always, for me, one that I think we should just keep, but Matson might be given a chance. I said, I heard Potch really likes him so far. Really? KSA, how are you, bro? Nice to see you as well. So we'll keep an eye on in and around any more outgoings there as well. Get my drink because it's very hot today, guys. If you've never had this, by the way, get yourself a J2O with spritzer, spritz with watermelon and apple. That is some serious drink, man. It's very refreshing. Watermelon and apple, banging. I think we have to keep Trev. A few of our centre backs are injury prone, and it's great backup. I agree, that, uh, DOB. I do. I agree. That's that's one of my real big question marks in getting rid of Trevor Chalabar. I just think that we can utilise him in a better. You know, we could. All right, he not play. He might not play as much, but we haven't got as many games next season. But you're right, Farner. Don't trust him with his injuries. Silva's not going to be playing every game. Badly Shield is still injured and coming back. Cole will, all right, fine, he'll be available. But, you know, that's it. You know, that is literally it. I think it's fair to keep Gallagher for one more season, guys. I I wouldn't. I would have personally. I think we could make money on Gallagher still now and get him, get him moved on. And then maybe look in that area in bringing in someone else. And there's talks about a 10 and we're going to go into an, it, it, you know, go into it a bit more with like a Dybala etc. And there's another one that they're talking about as well. I can't remember his name, but we'll get to him in a, in a bit. I think Chalabar can uh, back, uh, back Mick in the mix next summer, going on loans. Maybe a loan deal is a good move for Chalabar, you know? You know, maybe that is the right way forward with with that, but we'll see what happens. Now we're going to go on to Christian Pulisic, guys, because again, it looks like Chelsea are going to be getting rid of their offensive players. This was the most breaking recent news from Fabrizio Romano, who goes to say that AC Milan and Chelsea in direct contact now to close Christian Pulisic deal on a permanent move. The deal closer to then and never and imminent uh, now check in on the findings. I don't think it's a surprise with Christian Pulisic. To be honest, he's another one on the chopping board that had to go. I think we can all agree on that. Now, where have we ever seen the best of Christian Pulisic? I think lockdown Christian Pulisic was probably the best of him and was actually quite good. And it was a shame that he couldn't continue and find that form because he was he was effective over that period. Massively for us. 
But other than that, he's just failed to really hit the heights. And some people may say, well, it's because he hasn't been given many opportunities. Others would just say he's just inconsistent. Others would just say he finds himself more on the NHS bench and, you know, whatever else, you know. We brought him in on here. We brought him in on the back of Christian, um, on the back of Eden Hazard, if you remember. And there was a lot of hype around Christian Pulisic being like this sort of, not Eden Hazard, but like a different type in that. And I just don't think he's never found it for whatever reasons. I don't think he ever found it. I think he's got talent. I just don't think, like a lot of these players, I just don't think that they'll find it at Chelsea. And that's a, that's a real shame, man. That is a real big shame, you know. Would you take uh, Colo because I rate him again? I've not watched enough enough of Colo Moani. Obviously, there's talks that Chelsea are, are interested or intrigued in the player, but not seen enough of him. Guys, over 200 of you here now. Big love to every single one of you. Keep smashing the likes. How, how quickly can we get to 100 likes, guys? That's the question. How quickly can we do it? I only go for one and a bit of a season. Is what Hassan says. His injury situation hasn't improved him. And uh, also being complained and much makes sense for him to go, is what Dill says as well. Um, Ziek should leave ASAP as well. I mean, I just can't, but this guy is just inevitable. He just seems like to be like a boomerang. You throw him, he just comes back here. He needs to go as well. So, yeah, there's that on Christian Pulisic. And then to back that, we also got this on Christian Pulisic as well. Um, what's it gone? To basically say that he will sign a four-year contract with AC Milan via Mate Moreto as well. So on a four-year deal, he potentially looks like he will be leaving Chelsea. We've been told in the regions of around 19 million is what we're looking at. Um, I thought we should have at least gone and tried to get at least 20 to 25 mil minimum. I'd have gone more up to that, the 25s. But we seem to do quite a bit of business with AC Milan, you know, so, and there's obviously a good communication there between us as well. So, you know, 19 million to get Christian Pulisic off the books just seems a little bit low for me personally, but at the same time, you know, we move on from it. Pulisic wanted out last season, good, good player, but no consistency and too weak. I agree. Um, we must have a solid relationship with AC Milan. They keep getting rid of Deadwood. Yes, yeah, true. That's what I just said as well. They don't get. They don't give us Magnum, though. I know that's true. They won't. But I mean, at the same time, we're going for like their best, one of their best players. You know what I mean? So it makes a lot of sense as to why they might be a little bit deflective or defensive against that. Um, I think it's more important just to get rid of players out the door. Five million in comparison to wages. That's true. Even though we're selling them for so less, and we're not making much money of them. What we're actually doing is actually aided and helping the wage structure, and that's the big thing, really, in all of this is that we're able to um, we're able to sell these players, all right, not for a lot, but their wages in theory then get scrapped off, and that allows us to have a lot more freedom on bringing players across, but also getting them on the right sort of wage structure. Yeah, I saw that as well. I, I mean, I haven't really thought to look into that too much. There you go. That's Christian Pulisic. Guys, we are now moving into the, the news in around Dybala, which is quite interesting. Because, see, I always felt that Chelsea were going to look at bringing in someone. And according to Fabrizio Romano, Pochettino is a huge fan of Paolo Dybala. But Chelsea focus is currently on Moises Caicedo, as we already understand, willing to be the case in all of this. Um, it's an interesting one with Dybala. We've been told that it's going to be around 10 million. I think it was in around 10, between 10 and 15 million to bring them across. Um, how do I feel about it? I'm not, I always sit on the bench with this when it comes to the baller. Do I think that he's got a good ability? Yeah, there's ability there. Um, is he a good 10 to have in the Premier League? I question. But then I always think of Juan Mata and how good he was in there, in their very small short frame as, as the Bala. Um, is he low risk? Yes, because of how much he actually costs. So in theory, even if he does play shit, we only pay 10 odd million for him anyway. So you don't lose that there. Does he bring depth? Yeah. What else does he bring? He brings experience in the team. Experience that we don't have. He's pushing, what is he, 29, pushed on to the age of 30 as well in himself. Um, and on, I think from the negative points of it, it's... I don't, I'm not too sure if the profile of players 
the right one for us. I'm worried about his injuries because his injury record is shocking. And we can have a look at Dybala's injury record in a second. It's, it's pretty bad as well. Um, but, you know, Pochettino's intrigued in him. It seems it <laughs> seems like he's intrigued with a lot of the uh, Argentinian players. And I think we'll just be linked to a lot of them, to be honest. And a lot of them we probably just won't get. But this one seems like it may It could be a possibility. I'm not going to say it can happen because I still don't think it will. But it's obviously a possibility. And when you look at his injury record since 2020, and we'll jump into that now, his injury record's not... You know, not not the most prettiest is what I'd probably say. But at the same time, it's not massive injuries when you look at him. He had an ankle problem in, uh, on May the 19th, 2023. That put him out for 10 days. And he only missed two games. He then he was out for 11 days where he missed three. Then he was out um, for six days and missed two games. And then missed another two games in February. So the, the, the injury kind of, with him... The injuries under Roma kind of happened in, in all in a certain period because from February to May, he got that's where he got most of his injuries on back to back to back. Then you look at October, he had a hamstring injury for nine days. But then his hamstring injury didn't then reoccur because his next injury was a stress response of a bone, an abductor problem, and then a dissortation of an ankle. And then he had an ankle problem. So it was a completely separate injury to the one that he had at, in October last year. And then before that, you look at it, muscular problems, muscle fatigue, uh, problems with hip flexor, fire problem. He's just got all round muscular problems all the time, you know, and that worries me because you're going to come into the Premier League physically. You're going to get slapped. You're going to get hit hard. We've seen players, a lot of players come into Chelsea and struggle to hit the levels that they need to uh, because of the physicality of the league. You know, he hasn't been out for long, too long, other than when he got the ligament injury and he missed 80 days under Juventus. And that was 18 games that he missed. But barring that, they're all like two games, three games, two games. That can be annoying. At the same time, if you brought him in, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't be playing too much anyway. I don't think. I don't think he'd start. I, I don't really think he would start. I think he'd just be a bench player anyway. It would just bring, you know, it just bring experience, really. But in terms of the profile, I, again, I'm just not sure. I'll be honest with you. I've never been his, his biggest fan anyway, to be honest, even when he was very good, you know, um, in his early days at Juventus and whatever else. I just, you know, I thought, they were, you know, he's a decent player. But I never thought he was, oh, my God, amazing. But I don't know. There's pros and cons of both when it comes to, when it comes to Dybala. Um, big up, Louis. How you doing, bro? Nice to see you. Yeah, that's true. That's at 2.30 today. Madwaki, also injury prone. We really need another winger and I want Cherky. So just it. Cherky is another one that seems to be coming up quite a lot in regards to Chelsea. Um, when it comes to Chelsea. Um, I'm not too sure how serious the news in around Cherky is. We can have a quick look to see what there is on him. There is a little comment. Um, no, that's not that. Chelsea fans are going crazy. They're pushing agenda for Turkey. I mean, I'll be honest with you, there's not much news in and around Turkey at the moment and him coming to Chelsea anyway, so it's probably not worth taking. There's more to do with stats. Um, some people saying he gives him hazard vibes in how he plays. Others are saying that he would flop in the Premier League. Um, I don't know much about Turkey. I don't. Um, other than that, he's obviously a decent talent. But, you know, there is a chance that we're going to need ammunition in that area. We're going to need to bring someone in to bring the ammunition in that area at some point anyway. So... That'll be intriguing to see whether we get it done. Athletic Ridge are ready to sell uh, Felix um, PSG are ready to make an official offer, apparently. Well, it, Chelsea probably definitely won't because they've already turned off the idea of even having him coming to us. So I don't see that being us anyway. So let's move on to noises around Levi Colwell because a lot of people are saying, well, has, he got any, has this got anything to do with the news in around Caicedo? Well, 
Dean Jones seems to think that the noises that he's hearing from uh, people that cover Chelsea closely are that Levi Cole could generally come into the thinking for a starting role. Listen, part of the reason why, yeah, I agree, Couch. I agree. I think I think I'm on the same page as you with that. Um, moving on to Cole, Will. Big up, Bobby. Nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you guys. Still over 220 of you in, nearly 250. Big love to all of you guys that are tuned in at the moment, as always. Um, the noises that I'm hearing from um, closely are that Levi Cole could generally come into the, the things for a starting run. Well, he's doing very well in the Euros with him and Madwaki. He is a massive talent. We know that. He's still very young. He is. He has got a bit of experience, but I still think he, he still lacks that. I think he needs to be a part of Chelsea next season. Um, will he start ahead of Badia Shil and others that people seem to think may be the case or say that he's a better player than Badia Shil? That will be down to Poch over pre-seasons and I'll let my manager take control of and deal with that. I think for Levi, I think he just needs to understand that, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, Chelsea want to keep him and he's one of the, you know, one of the players from the academy that we want to try and bring through eventually and that makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, I think he needs to be aware that, you know, if you're going to be in the Chelsea squad, you're going to need to fight for your role and that should always be the case. And, you know, he's, we've been told he's put a stall on the, you know, to, on his contract whilst he's at the Euro, so that when he gets back to Chelsea, he can talk to Poch and understand his roles. And I think Poch will probably come out with the, a very clear mark. You know, you're talented. We know this. We want to keep you. Chelsea want to keep you. But at the same time, you need to show it. And he should have the hunger as a player to want to stay at this club, you gain experience from the, at the other defenders that are around him that are more experienced than him, like the Thiago Silvers, for example. And amalgamate himself into a role where he, when he gets his chance, he becomes more consistent and then finds himself starting games. It should never be a case of, oh, I'm coming in and I'm starting. It should always be a case that I'm coming in and I'm coming to fight for my position, I'm coming in to, you know, earn my place. And that's what we need to see. You know, that's what we need to see with him. So I think with Levi Colwell, yes, bring him in. Exactly, he needs hundred percent. That, that exactly, exactly. You know, and I feel like some of these players, especially in today's game, some of these players, especially the young ones, they don't seem to want to accept contracts because they want confirmation that they're going to be heavily involved in plans and playing, you know, over half or whatever of the games and you know be on the pitch. Which I get, they want to play football. I get it, but if you're coming to a top club. You need to appreciate the qualities that are already in the team and the competition that is going to be there. And then it's down to you to show it. So just go and show it. Go and do your thing. But yeah, we should keep Leo Vicar. Well, yeah, Brighton are interested in him as well. What's going on here? Yeah, Brighton are interested in him as well. We know that. But then but there's comments around like, oh, he's 10 times better than Badly Shield, you know. He's this, that and the other. And obviously there's some little, and I'm bringing this up because it's, it's intriguing to, to obviously see these things. Obviously people disrespect him, Ben Wan, because they think Levi Colwell is a million times better of a player. But when you look at Baddy Shield and Colwell's stats per last season, yeah, Baddy Shield's ahead. Colwell's very close to him. They're equally, at, at looking at them, at their ages as well, 22, 20, still very young. Hi, all right. Baddy Shield has games played. Baddy Shield's played a lot less of than Levi. Levi's played 17, so Levi's had more minutes. The performance index shows that Baddy Shield, his overall performances have been better than Carwell. But obviously, Carwell's at Brian, who are not a bad team, finished above us, don't get me wrong. But, you know, his passing completion was slightly better. But then again, it was very match on match. His pass accuracy was pretty much match on match with Levi Carwell. His tackles made are better than Levi Colwell, which means once he goes into a tackle and he makes it, he usually tends to succeed in winning it. Colwell's is a bit under off. I'm going to say it's not massively great. His fouls conceded. He's He's got a habit of giving silly fouls away. Colwell seems to be someone that, that makes right decisions in tackles. The aerial duel is exactly the same, even though Badger Shield was a lot taller than him. Uh, Cole's very good in the air. 
The ground jewel succession, again, 53.85 to 52.78 of Levi Colwell is, is very close. The clearances levels, Baddy Shield tops it, 3.3 to his 2.0. But again, Colwell's, you know, not bad. And his interceptions, again, are not on the same levels as Baddy Shield. But near, again, near, near enough close. My point in all of this is that this these type of stats along with the eye test of watching these players, goes to show me that they're sort of, in, in terms of their journey they're sort of, and, and their abilities, they're sort of near enough the same. All they need now is competition, experience, and and obviously, obviously minutes involved in that in doing so. So let them battle it out. They're both very young. They're both, in theory, when given chances, you know, taking them. Stats-wise, they seem to be very close to each other. You know, good. Both left-footed players, both young players. One's from France, one's from England. You know, both looking to have bright futures. Both at Chelsea. Both could potentially make it into the team, which I think makes it harder because they're both left-footed. But you know, you could maybe once see Levi and ba- Benoit Badeshil as a pair in the future. Could if Fafana's injury record continues and he's not as fit as he needs to be throughout it. So I don't think it should be like get rid of Benoit because Levi Colwell's here now and he's amazing. And I think a lot of Chelsea fans do this. Oh, we need to have him. We need to, he needs to start all the time. He needs to start all the time. He's, 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 he's this, he's that, he's that. Yeah, he is. He's very good. But in terms of where they are as players at the moment, let them just have it out. You know, let them just, you know, compete with each other, push each other, accelerate each other. And then we'll see who continues to do that more quicker and that's what i want that's what i want it'd be nice to see them both go like that both become top players and then we've got these top you know young defenders in our team and that's the big thing but it's a good headache though actually that's what i'm saying it's a good headache it should it should be a good headache to have so let them compete let them compete and let them fight for the position it's clear currently 100 percent, but it go to say Colwell comes into Chelsea, plays with better players, looks a lot better, and in theory, you know, that can happen. So we'll see. Doesn't really matter. All my point is the stats show that they're both as close as to each other as they are. Not one's ten times better than the other, like some people keep saying. Oh, he's so much better than him. No. The eye test and the stats say that they're both quite close to each other. And that's a good thing. They're both in a position. They're both very young. They both deserve to push each other. They both still have got progression in their own, you know, in their own footballing um, experience to gain. So let them do it. Let them do it at Chelsea. It's a good problem. Moises Caicedo, guys, smash the like buttons. I know we haven't got enough likes. I just know we haven't got enough likes. I don't really want to have to go and have a look at it now because we're about to go on to Moises Caicedo and then I'm getting the panel in and then we're going to start talking to the panel about over the overall news. Is Run up the likes, guys. I am going to go and have a look now. I'm going to go and have a look. And at the moment, there's nearly 200 people on Chelsea Fan TV. There's, what, 90 people on GNA TV. We should be over 100 likes. So let's go. Right, GNA TV, that is just... That is just come on, guys. We're not even at 50. You're not even at 50, guys. There's nearly 100 people there, and we've not even gone over 50. If you haven't hit the fun button, guys, please do it now. Please do it now. I'm watching it. I'm watching the fun. I'm going to come over to Chelsea Fan TV next. I'm watching it, guys. I want to see that go hard. I want to see it move. It's not moving. Hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Come on, guys. You're all sitting here watching me, going through the news, talking to each other. But... The likes are low. The likes are too low, man. Anyway, going on to Chelsea Fan TV. You guys have got 90 likes over there. There's nearly over 200 people there. 90 likes. Guys, if you've not hit the likes at Chelsea Fan TV, go and hit the likes now. That should be over 100 in, in seconds. I'm watching it. I'm watching that fun. Let's see it go. Let's see it rise. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Over 100 on Chelsea Fan TV. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Let's get it up. Let's get it up. Let's get it up. And the same, come on GNA TV. Over 100, 100 years here, not enough likes. Keep hitting the likes. Keep hitting the likes. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. Over 300 people in the building. Big love to every single one of you guys that are here. We're going to go on to Moises Caicedo now as well. So, guys, keep continuously heating them likes. Come on, keep getting them up. Keep getting the likes up while I'm talking. I really appreciate it, guys. I don't want to have to keep doing that, but I have to if we've not got enough likes. So if you could just do it without me actually having to say anything, it'd be great, guys. Um, Kendry Pires is a crack, is what Moises Caicedo says. The truth is there are times where I watch independent games. It's good to see these talented uh, talents in Ecuador because we know we have very good youth. I'm very happy for him. And everything, only what I can tell of him is that he keeps on the right track, doing things really well. He's going to go far. So there's these comments, Caicedo, on Kendri Paez as well, which is, which is another, another Ecuadorian, another young prospect as well, who is at Chelsea, 16 years old. Got a lot to look up to, which is interesting because he speaks about him on it. There was an interview, um, which I'll show you very quickly, on Caicedo, where the questions are saying, Caicedo, when he was asked about Chelsea trying to get his shirt, sign him. And then it goes on to say, what did he answer? He, he smiled. So it wasn't a very serious, it was a, it was a smile. I'll show you guys it very quickly now. Kendri Paez, que ya es un hecho que va al Chelsea, equipo que también suena mucho para, para que tú vista su camiseta. He saw the smile. He saw the smile. We saw the little cheeky cheeky smile when he mentioned Chelsea to her. You know, so interesting stuff there as well. Um, I'm hoping we get an answer to this very, very soon, to be honest. And then he goes on to say this about the whole situation. He goes on to say, I'm waiting. What he goes, I am waiting. And he talked about his future. I'm waiting. Whatever God decides, because I know he knows what's best for me. So again. Keeping it very close to himself, not saying much to it. I am waiting. Whatever God knows and uh, knows is, is best for me next. He's keeping it close to his, his himself. There's not much more said in regards to that on that on him. But then there is also more news from from him in terms of the the fees and what we're trying to do, how we're trying to get him. And this goes on with a Bobby Vincent tweet or comment to say that. Brighton are demanding around 80 million for Moises Caicedo, but Chelsea would rather pay in instalments instead of just one-off fees. So what they mean by that is very simple. We're probably trying to offload the 80-odd plus million over maybe a five, six-year deal. They want it on a big one-off fee, which could be split in, say, two years or three years, where the first payment is the majority of it so that they could probably then take that money go into the market and recoup it so i get what brighton are trying to do they're trying to get maybe 40 50 million of it now the other 20 30 million of it next season chelsea are going well hang on here you know you're in favor of our storm plans we do a lot of work with you you know we are willing to match what you want but to do that we would like to pay it over four or five years now we got told 80 million we got told 85 million. We are now being told that it's this, which is where we go on to next on it, which is where we go on to next. We're now being told that Brighton want 100 million for Moises Caicedo. Worth it. Chelsea are currently refusing to meet Brighton's asking price of 100 million for the midfielder. Now, why has it got to this point? Simple. Something I said on this show, funny enough, I think it was maybe two shows back, I said the Declan Rice move to Arsenal will have a big hand on what Brighton say in regards to Caicedo. We knew he was 80 to 85 million. We know and we were knew that Chelsea were willing to meet the 80, 85 million required for Caicedo in the structure. I would say they've kind of like pulled a fast, but they've kind of put us in a catch-22. And the catch-22 is, is very simple. They know 
that we are desperate to sign a player in that position. They also know that in terms of availability of players in that position, at the, maybe the levels of what Caicedo is, along with the Premier League proven tag that he does have, they know that we're in a position where Chelsea could maybe pay over the odds to get it done. They saw it with Enzo Fernandez. They've seen Arsenal do it with Declan Rice. They favour Caicedo to be, in their opinion, as of the level of him, even though there, there may be different profiles. They've seen it. And they've now tried, obviously given it a, a, you know, given it a go. The difference from the Chelsea aspect of thing of it all is now we have negotiators. And why we are refusing to meet that, and maybe we wouldn't have done last year, is because we have people that know how to negotiate. We have people that know how to sit down and maybe not just fully get what we want, but maybe find a way to compromise and get to where we need with this. I think we're at the going end of this Caicedo saga. I thought that we were going to get an announcement this week from Fabrizio Romano of the Here We Go until this came up. This came up and it makes sense that it's came up on the delay. But we are definitely what I would say at the end of all of this. And why Chelsea have to be very clever with this is Caicedo wants to leave. Made it very clear in January when he sent that statement across the whole of the world that he was leaving Brighton and whatever. Brighton agreed to let Caicedo go this summer. So they have to let him go. Chelsea were really originally met the 85 million they wanted, but now Brighton have kind of tried to throw another 15 mil on top on the basis of what's happened with Declan Rice. What we have to do, in my opinion, is just be very stubborn in agreeing what they originally agreed on. And then maybe lean on Caicedo, the agent and whatever, to try and get this move quicker. And that's where we might then find an, an agreement a lot less than the 100 mil. I would be very shocked that if we went out of our way to spend 100 mil on Caicedo, that means we'd have spent over 200 mil on two midfielders in Enzo and Caicedo. Don't get me wrong, top players. We've seen it with Enzo already. People forgot how much he costs now. It's not, you know, the number's not the number's not really a thing anymore because of the quality of the player, because it was a need. And this is the issue we find ourselves in at the moment. If we don't get Caicedo, where does it leave us for... Where does it leave us for the next steps? And I know there's a, La a Lavia, for example, available. And, he, you know, he's another one that, that Chelsea could maybe turn their attention to. You know, there's talks about Schumeni at Real Madrid. He's not Premier League proven. Yeah, he's a good player. I think the idea would be to try and get him and one more. But he has to be, it has to be him. And I think when you look at the summer window, the main top target for us and has been for a while is getting him and we have to get it done by Tuesday, Wednesday next week. If we don't get an, like an, at least, you know, a full agreement, Chelsea, whatever, maybe not here we go. I say that Chelsea is on the final steps and whatever. I'd be quite surprised because we're going into pre-season, going across to the US. One of the things that we were told by the journos is that Chelsea want to get Caicedo deal done before we fly to the US. Yes, there's always delays, but there is a relationship already there between Chelsea and Brighton. And the fact that he needs he needs to go because he wants to, the fact that Brighton have to sell him, the fact that Chelsea are willing to meet what Brighton initially said, I think favours us. I just don't see us doing that. And this is where we need to make sure that they compromise with. And I think they probably will have to, to be honest with you. You know, they've tried it. They may have got. They may have got away with it last year. They may have got away with it last year from the old Chelsea, but now we've got negotiators. I don't think it's going to be the case, and I do think it's going to be around eighty-five million. I do think it's going to be around that. I've said that for a very long time. I just don't expect us to be going out of our way to spend much more than that. But again, would it shock you? Would it shock you that we go and do that? Probably not, because it's Chelsea. You know. And we are quite desperate for that. You know, the difference here is I would want both because they're both different profiles. And I think Caicedo is a different profile to Paulinho. I think Paulinho is defensively more astute in front of a back four. Not to say that Caicedo can't because he can. But then Caicedo is very versatile and able to, and able to, you know, to do other things, box to box, moving forward with the ball, brings it any EG, it gives you that, that sort of, like I said to you before, Michael Essien style of play. 
Some people feel that it's too much money for him. I think when you look at the current market and the inflation, it ain't. The fact that you're getting yourself a Premier League proven player that's played there for two seasons now. And when you look at his stats, last season is very polished. Yes. The question marks would be there with Caicedo because, yes, he's played very well at Brighton. But from going to Brighton and jumping into a team like Chelsea, where you'll eventually be playing top level football, Champions League and whatever, maybe not this season, but moving forward. You know, and then the, the the challenges of being in the Champions League, which he hasn't had at Brighton, the challenges of potentially pushing for titles at later stages. These are all things that he needs to have grasp of if he comes to Chelsea. But then also we have to see him improve as a player. And from what I've seen of what he's done at Brighton now and being able to come in and do it, I think he's in a position in terms of an experience element of being able to do that at Chelsea. It's just now, can he kick on and become even better? And better and better. Guys, nearly 400 of you here. Big up to every single one of you guys. Slap the likes, guys. Come on, let's keep going on hitting them, them like buttons. And Enzo Caicedo pivot is, is amazing, in my opinion. It really is, because it releases Enzo of having to worry too much of the defensive duties. And we want to see Enzo further up the pitch. And I think Caicedo will, will relieve that of him. And Caicedo will say, look, this is my area now. This is my role. This is what I've been paid a lot of money to do and come across and do. You need to now go and do what you do best because you've been paid a lot of money to come here as well. Go and create, go and become good. And they'll have a good relationship between them. Physically, they'll be good together and strong together. But then you add another one to it. And that's what we want. We want to add someone else in it. And maybe that next one is more of a defensive minded individual. A Paulinha, Lavia, Kone. You know, someone that, that can give you that specialist role. But at all costs, we have to get this done. The issue with it, we're in a catch-22, because if this is really true, which again, might not be, this is just say, we may be, you know, we may be forced into, into having to pay maybe a little bit more than we want to get it done. But I just think we need to hold it. But then holding it then means we're delaying other things and we need to get on with other things. And, you know, other things meaning that we need defensive players to look at. You know, get on with the offensive players. Are we going to get a striker? We're being told we need to get another winger slash 10 because Havertz, Mount, Gallagher could potentially be going as well. So just get on with it. Do you know what I mean? Just just get on with it. Get this done and let's move on. And obviously it goes on from here to say that Chelsea are trying to find a solution. This is for Brixia Roman, Romano's comments. We'll try and find a solution altogether for Moises Casado. And he's saying it now will be next week. Nothing ever gets done over the weekend, guys. I'll tell you that now. It's always Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I would expect things to heat up now on the Moises Caicedo deal going into next week. And I, and I said it already. I think we're at the end. We're at the end of this whole Caicedo situation, in my opinion. Just go and get it done and don't fuck it up. That that, that would be my. Uh, That'll be my thing. Right, I've sent the link into the panel. There's nearly 400 of you guys here. Big up to every single one of you. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. I don't care to see that. Yeah, he's not a Kante. You, know, you won't replace Kante like you couldn't replace Ka ha um, Hazard. We need Kaiseido plus another Cam at least. I agree, Soham. But we need to walk away from it. We need to walk away. Why do we need to walk away from this deal? So if we're going to walk away from this deal, who, who else are you bringing in? Who else are you bringing in then? Who's your next go-to person? Well, he should be. I think Chelsea are making it very hard for Brian. I think Brian are realizing that it's not going to get, it's not going to happen because Chelsea are going to want to keep him. Um, you won't get him. He will go bigger to a team. Either Arsenal, he'll go to a bigger team. What are you talking about, mate? What are you going on about? Um, <laughs> what are you going on about, mate? I didn't. I didn't. I don't know about desperate, Jim. These owners are like slow burners. They they're not desperate. No, we are desperate in terms of the, the the area that we need to, you know, to 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 get this player in. And we know that this position specifically is required to have someone of the abilities of Caicedo. And what I'm saying, the desperate the, the desperate comes on the, on the basis that we don't want it to be a case that we walk away from this deal, not us, but Brighton or whatever, because we need to get it done. There's the desperate element to it. It needs to happen. Yeah, they can be slow burners. But these kind of deals always are. Negotiating always is. And why we got 65 million for Kai Havertz is because we didn't rush into things. 
is because we held our ground when they offered us 50 mil. They're just doing the same thing. The difference to what they're doing is that they've given us the 85 mil, which we've been willing to me. And I think we're probably going to try and structure and get done, whether it's a, a bigger payment up front, which gets it done at that figure, which I think could be the case. But now they're, they're also supposedly saying, well, actually, we want another 50 mil on top, actually, because Declan Rice was sold for 100 mil. You know, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know with it all. I just think we need to get on with it. You know, that that's all I mean. And when I mean by desperacy, I mean, I mean on the basis that we we just need to get this profile player in this club. It needs to happen because ugarte has gone PSG. Rice has gone to Arsenal. He's the next sort of bit other than um Couch's favourite, Lavia, who's available, you know, and then after all of that, maybe a Paulinho and then some of the younger players, it leaves us in a position where I think we need to get two anyway. And he has to be for certain one of them for his abilities, for his experience in the Premier League, for how we were going to play with the pivot, him being next to Enzo, I think will be very key. I mean, Couch, this whole... Uh, firstly, hello, mate. How you doing? Nice to see you as well. Yo, always. what are you saying, King? You good? All good, bro. All good. We're still sitting here waiting mm -hmm. for Caicedo news. Obviously, the, the the better side of it of here we go and it's done and this, that and the other. It seems to be a case of that we are being told 80, 80 to 85 million, but the delay on the eight year 85 million is that they want more of a bigger one off up front fee and we're not, you know, we're trying to structure it over more installments. And now we're being told it's 100 mil that they want because of so assuming, like we said on the chat, Declan Rice, they've seen the, the movement for that and they value him as of a player, maybe as close to Declan Rice in terms of ability and whatever. Where do you think we stand on this whole situation? Is this one that you feel we're at the end game with? And do you feel that you still feel very confident that we'll get it done on the correct, whatever that maybe price will be? First of all, big up to the chat. Much love. Um, Don, what's up? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, this this is this is kind of what I said last week when we were having this conversation. I don't think that these negotiations happen overnight. Um, of course, they're going to be pushing for... 100 mil seeing what Declan Rice went for I, I I would do the same you know um similar profile player you know a guy that you know obviously is in you know the ascendancy in his career he's still not reached his peak uh you're seeing already good performances at his age so I can see why they would at least want to entertain trying to get 100 mil for him but bottom line is and it's what you said Jim this this is going to come down to Caicedo and his agent putting pressure on Brighton to honor their agreement uh, yeah. to yeah. to to say, listen, you you can stay for the rest of the season. We'll let you go in the summer. Um, this whole extortion thing where they're going from 85 million to 100 million to whatever after that is just that's just negotiations. I don't think that it's going to come down to that. I don't think that Chelsea is going to get anywhere near 100 million paying for this guy. It's just going to take some time. And to be honest with you, um, I always thought it would. I, I didn't think that this was going to be an overnight thing. The only thing that I thought would kind of push it in the direction of having it done sooner rather than later was the fact that we've already been negotiating with these guys um, for Caicedo, you know, yeah. for other players that we've had and whatnot. So I figured that the relationship's already there and it's just a matter of like crossing T's and dotting I's. But clearly this is a big, big money negotiation and big money negotiations don't happen overnight so it's going to take a little bit of time yeah i hear you i mean don what you saying bro nice to see you as always i mean yes, this, bro. this caicedo thing seems to still be continuing we spoke about it a little bit in the group chat yesterday um mm. what's your thoughts on this whole well it was 85 now could potentially mm. be 100 like do you think we'll be think Chelsea mm -hmm. will, will go above the odds to do to get Caicedo and spend that kind of money or do you think we'll hold, hold yeah. still on this and whatever yeah, no, I think I think we'll hold still. I think I think like like Couch has said a lot of what he said that echo the same thoughts. Like if you think about it, it's it's a negotiation tactic. Do you know what I mean? Um I think we've been going back and forth with Brighton. I honestly think we're quite close. I was on the terrace yesterday, I was saying the same thing. I think I think we're quite close to getting it done because what came out yesterday was that ideally we want to get it done before we actually fly out to America for pre-season. So, you know, the fact that we're taking a different approach in terms of not actually putting it out there that we're going back and forth with bids, I do think that we're hopefully getting close to some sort of a, sort of an agreement, but I don't see us paying up to 100 million. I think 
what we'll do is what we've done with like Modric and Enzo, um, make it quite favourable in terms of the upfront payments. So I think it's all down to the structure, really. Um, I don't think it's going to be 100 million. I think, yeah, I think you're probably looking at 85, maybe even 90 max if they're trying to drag their heels a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a, a matter of time now. It's been ongoing, you know, we've, we've obviously done all the groundwork with Casado. It's not like we just wanted him yesterday. We wanted this guy in January, then we, you know, we moved on to Enzo um, when that bid got rejected. But we came back in for him. So this is long-standing interest. He wants to move. You know, Brighton have kind of promised him that he can move on as well. Um, they know he's going to move on. I know a lot of rivals have said, oh, Brighton don't have to sell and whatnot. But De Zerbi came out, pretty much said him and McAllister are going to leave. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, he's not. This is not Daniel Levy. I know Brighton aren't aren't easy to deal with. But again, we've got a good relationship on both sides. You know, um, we took Potter from them. They've taken Gilmore. They've taken Lamptey. Do you know what I mean? They took Colwell on loan. So they're going to want a lot more from us going forward. So I think it's just negotiating, really. They're trying to get as much as they can. But honestly, I think we're not going to we're not going to pay 100 million. I think it'll probably be 90 million max, I'd say. But I'm probably looking at 85 is what I'd say. Probably 85 is a benchmark I'd probably look at. Do you think we're dealing with other aspects of what we need to do in, in behind all of this? Or do you think we're taking this very slow, like some of the people saying in the chat and just mm. trying to get this done and then maybe moving on to... What we've been do you know what it is? More. Do you know what it is? Like, I want everyone to sort of get their head around the fact that silence doesn't mean that you're working on things slowly. Do you know what I mean? One of the first things that Poch said at the beginning, well, what was reported was that he wants things to be calm. And last, if you remember last summer, Jim, there was leaks after leaks after leaks, bro. And we were complaining then. Like, we everyone knows our targets. Everyone knows what we're doing. Everyone knows our negotiation tactics. So you just have to trust that the club are doing things behind the scenes because, like I said, it's long-standing interest and we know that things are happening. Even Fabrizio doesn't know when we're looking to bid. Do you know what I mean? That's that's a good sign for me. I think sometimes you just have to kind of do things in the background. It doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. I know as fans, you want to you wanna see things like physically and actually see Fabrizio tweet, we're putting this bid or we're going to put in a bid tomorrow. But, you know, there are, there are times where you just think, you know what, get things done in the back. As long as it, it gets done, that's the main thing. It doesn't always mean silence. Doesn't always mean that nothing's being done. I think it's quite close. Um, but from what what it looks like, it looks like we're taking a different approach. Um, we're, we're trying to get something done verbally and then actually bid for him. You know, rather than going yeah, back and forth. That, uh, that's the way to go about it, really. But like the, the most important thing here, I think, for Chelsea going forward is trying to recalibrate the the opinion that we'll just pay overs for anybody. You know, mm. like we really have to rein that in now because. There's been a lot of big, big spending going on with this club and teams are starting to, to like raise prices just because they know how desperate we've shown that we can be in, in the past. Yeah. So that's important to me, like more more than anything, I want to get Caicedo over the line. But more than anything, I want it to be on our terms or closer to our terms than theirs. Exactly. That means we're waiting till August, September before the deal gets done. So be it. So nah, be it. It, 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 it'd be, it would be great. It would, it would be great to have them before you know, preseason and great to have them before the season starts and whatnot. But most important thing is to get this deal over the line. It's not about when we get it over the line. It's about getting it over the line and mm. not being taken to the cleaners in, in the process as well. So if it's if it happens later in the summer, then so be it. You know, I, I really do believe, though, that like it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I also believe that if it if it starts to drag on, you're gonna just gonna start hearing noise from uh, Caicedo and his and his camp about getting it over the line because he wants to go to camp. He wants to be with the team. He wants mm. to, be, you know, he's a gamer man. He's a type of guy that wants to be around his, his squad and he wants to to train, learn the new methods and whatnot. So he's just gotta put pressure on. And then if it starts to drag out, and I expect him to do that. So I'm I'm, yeah. I'm calm about this whole situation. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I definitely don't see it dragging on because like 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 we've already said, you know, Caicedo wants to move. Um, we we want him. He's our main target. So I don't see this dragging on to August um, and just ongoing like a long, long standing saga. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think, yeah, it just needs to get done. It needs to get done. It's it's going to I think it's close, guys. I honestly think next week we're going to have a big update on Casado. I, I was hoping ideally by today. But I think as of next week, you're going to hear something serious about this. Um, I do. I do. I've just got a feeling that it's it's quite close. If you read between the lines, like I said, we want to get it done before we go on preseason. I think they're yeah. pushing for it now. I think you're right. Uh, uh, only because, and again, this is not me trying to blow my own horn. Or I, I, I get involved in like a lot of negotiations for my work yeah. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And when you get into like the second and third like conversations, 
that's where you start thinking, okay, listen, if we don't have something by now, we're in trouble. So mm. I'm, I'm anticipating that's where Chelsea is right now, considering they already had the discussions in January. Uh, if we're, if Maurizio or if Maurizio's anywhere close to being accurate, they already talked last week. And this next week coming up should be the decider. If it gets beyond also, three um, negotiations, yeah. it's going it's well, to... That's, that's what, he also mm. mentioned that the strategy of how Chelsea approach deals is a lot different to what it was last year. And the fact that we... Um, we don't just go in any willy-nilly now. It's right, what do you want? Where are you at? Okay, we'll match that. Tick one. Tick two, structure. Getting it right, stallment plans. Obviously, we've been told that they want more of a bigger one-off payment. And being that, it's probably going to be a 40 million up front. There may be another 20, 30 million or whatever, you know, in the second and maybe the third season of, of him being at Chelsea. We're obviously trying to push more of these the installment side of it over five, maybe a five year over a five year you know breakdown or something so you know the difference with it all now i think to where maybe what we was doing where it was just todd bowley and egg belly is we kept going back and forwards on the on the fees you know on the on the major fee. i don't see this 100 million what's came out being a case of like it what it was last year mm. where we're at a point of oh what where where do we need to be at with feet and we're still there. I don't think we're there with that anymore with Brighton. I think we're well ahead of yeah. that. And that's why I agree. And I think I think we're at a point now where I think we're at a point now where we're at the final final, you know, the final ends of the games with them. And I think by Wednesday next week, if we haven't heard a full agreement, in my opinion, or this, that, and the other, maybe say Thursday at the latest, then I'd be quite shocked based on what I've heard, what I've read up to this point now. And that's why I said to you guys yesterday, I just think I just think we're there. To be honest, I don't think there's more else to this. And the fact, and you've got to stress the fact that, and what Don said as well, and I read this, is that we want him on the US tour. Mm. He has to come to us with the US tour. So I think we're going to obviously try and get it done and maybe move on to the next things. And obviously the next things being, which I want to talk to you guys, is obviously this news around Dybala, because it's a weird one, isn't it, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not his, I've, I've never been his biggest fan. Um, 10 million. Is that low risk? Yes. Does he bring experience? Yes. Does he, you know, on the flip side of it, what are the negatives? Injury prone. All right, we've looked at that already. They're not lengthy injuries, but they're consistent. Couple day, couple games here, couple games there, couple games here, couple games there. Seems to have a, like they, they build up in that way. Um, he's not played in the Premier League. He's what nearly thirty years up. Does he fit the whole what Chelsea are doing right now when the signing of young players? Probably not. Um, couch, what do you think? I, I mean, Bro, I you, you already happen. know where I am with this one. This ain't it for me. Yeah. This ain't it for me. Yeah. Like, if we're talking about competition for places, you know, an often injured, almost 30 year old is supposed to be pushing for that number 10 position at Chelsea. You know, like it's not his first time. Yes, big up Coachella. Big, big up, up big up. Nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you. Yeah, I, I just think that, like, when you look at the, 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 I, I know everyone's like, well, whatever, man. It's only ten million or whatever. It's not about that. It's about giving this guy a place in the squad. Like, in you, if you're gonna spend money on him, you might as well. He might as well be challenging for the position. And in my opinion, a thirty-year-old, near thirty-year-old Dybala, who's injury prone, coming to the prem for the first time, you know, uh, even in even in Syria, like he had an OK season last year, but. It, Overall, Serie A performances have not been, you know, of this other world. And then to come to the Prem and expect him to do more than that is just, it doesn't, it doesn't jive with me. You know, had this have been even like four or five years ago, maybe. But at this point in time in his career, like I'm, I'm not trying to see Chelsea take on older attackers when we have young players that still need to develop, that still need minutes, that still need somebody, that still need to challenge for positions as well. So... I'll take a hard pass on this, um, but, you know, that's me. Don, what's your thoughts on Dybala? I've got to ask you. Like, do you think he's, he's a yeah. good option? No. It, it, it's, it's such a weird one. It's such a weird one because I actually, I actually think he's good. I, I've rated him, like, um, from his time at Juve, obviously. Um, season after season, we spoke about this in the group chat yesterday, but this guy was meant to go Man United, like, God knows how many times. That never happened. But yeah, like you said, the age profile and the, I mean, age profile isn't isn't the worst. Like he's not even 30 yet. But in comparison to the rest of the team and what we're trying to build now, the younger 
younger core. Um, he's obviously a little bit older. But the main concern that I've got is his injury, his injury record, and he's quite injury prone. But I do think like if we brought him in, I don't think he'll be in the eleven. I think he's more just for like squad depth. I reckon. Um, I reckon he's someone that would be bringing in uh, off the bench, maybe starting some games. To be honest, um, like an yeah, like a squad player really. Um, I don't see him starting ahead of Nkuku, um because yeah, the price, like I said. But I'm I'm not fully I'm not fully against it. I'm not fully against it because it's, it is only ten million. Uh, and if it doesn't work out, you know, it's, that's that's peanuts. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but but here here's I'm the problem I have. It. It. It's not so much about the like the money. Obviously, the money's fine. It's just mm. whether or not you're getting the profile, like a 30 year old player, to come in and challenge for the position. You know what I mean? Like I don't see him giving Nkunku the challenge that we that we think he will. You know, Why don't you? He's pushing... good. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's not. He's not pushing in Kunku. He's not pushing in Kunku. Let's be real. All right. I, I would disagree with that because he's a he's a you, good player. He he knows where the back of the net is and he can definitely find you, a pass. You think that he can? You think that he's pushing in Kunku? I, I mean, like I, 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 yeah, I think he's good enough. I think he's good enough. Oh, I think okay. I think he's well, a good. That, I think, maybe that's. I think I think yeah. he's a. I think he's a. I think he's a good. Like I said, Kunku is going to be mm. our starter. And Kunku is going to be our starter. And I don't think Jabala at this stage right now will be coming in to say I want to push in Kuku, right? I think he's someone that's going to know if his. He comes here, he wants. To, he's got to come here wanting to play. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah, I don't I think, want somebody coming here sitting on the bench just collecting a paycheck. It, no, it like, all depends. It the, all depends the, on. The, it all depends on the role. That's what I'm saying. It all depends on the role that he gets and to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Because some some guys will come in and say and and know that they're not a starter, but at the same time know that listen when they're called upon they need to do a job. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Jabal is not I, rough. I he's, not rough. I you. he's not a rough player. You. No, it's... no, he's not. He's not. He's not. I just think that, like, if you're thinking about get, bringing somebody in to challenge for the position, mm. he's not going to challenge Nkunku for me. For me, Nkunku is much, much better, you know, and, like, he, he won't feel like his position's under threat. And this is the thing that I want at Chelsea. I want healthy competition at every position. I want people mm. to be challenging for roles. I don't want Nkunku to get comfortable he's at the number him. 10. Yeah, it's that's true. Happen. That's true. That's that's true. Like I, like I said, thing, I literally with with Dybala. Go on, Jim. Go on, Jim. He he's the thing with Dybala is the same thing I felt with Jao Felix. The same thing. I'll be honest with you. I just don't think. I don't think he is. What sort of wages is he on? Is his wages quite it's high? About a hundred. About a hundred k. That's not that's bad. Probably low now. So, Roma don't pay that. Don't don't pay that much. I don't honestly. I don't he's, think, but his 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 wages wouldn't have come down from. Uh, from Juve, he's probably on like a hundred and thirty euro. Let me check it now. Checking it now, he's yeah. on. He's he gets seven seven million a year. One hundred and thirty five euros. One hundred and thirty five thousand yeah, so euros. Yeah, him, so about hundred about a hundred k. Yeah, hundred well, k yeah. pound. Hey, give or go, but him and and Kunku are completely two different profile players. Let's just get this. Yeah, you know, right. the comparison between the two, there isn't a comparison for me. One's a killer in front of goal. The other, you could look at. In his in his prime, being mm. someone that scored goals but created, what he reminds me, I'll say what he reminds me of. What I look at Juan Mata and how well he did in the Premier League when he was at Chelsea, right? And he was someone that has the same frame as Dybala, played very well and succeeded in it. What worries me now with Dybala is a bit like what Cap says: Is he going to push, bring competition? Maybe to then Kunku for that position if that's what he's been bought in for. I'm not too sure. What he does bring is experience. I think he does bring that, and I think we do lack that. Um, Will he bring goals? Question mark potentially, but I just don't think. At, I just, I just, I just don't know if the Bala, if the Bala is the right profile of player to come and play in the Premier League because of his frame. I think he'll get bit. I think there's a chance he'll get bullied. I think you really know how physical this league is. I think there's a chance that he may suffer in with that. The issue with it all is that he's just very low risk. So even if you bring him in and he gets bullied and he doesn't adjust to the Premier League and whatever the negatives are or whatever, you can say, oh, he's shit, it didn't work. But yeah, he cost us 10 mil. But I don't know if I want to have that type of player in our team anymore. No, anyway, we've done me it. either. We've done, me we've done either. it with so many me players either, in the man. past. Sound I guess we brought him in. Same bullshit. All right, he was on, he was on loan, wasn't he? I think, anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Aubameyang, for example brought him back, you know, and whatever he didn't, you know, like, I just, I don't want us to just, I don't want any more reclamation time, progress. You're, you're, yeah. you're killing, yeah. you're, you're basically one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing I'll say though, is that yeah. 
one thing I can say with with Dabala, like I said, he can fight. He can definitely find the back of the net, and he's he can definitely create as well. That's one thing about him. And I, I didn't watch I didn't watch him in the league last season. I watched him in the Euro, uh, Europa League. Um, and yeah, if you look at his stats, he actually he actually did quite well. He put up serious numbers last season. But I'm not going to speak about him as if I was watching him. But overall, you know, like I said, those stats back up him as a player. He's actually a good player, and he's got end products as well. So I, I, it all depends. Like I said, it all depends on the role that he's going to be asked to play when he comes in. I don't see him coming in to say, right now when we're building this project and looking at it and, and being complacent about it. I get what you're saying, Couch, because I don't want any players coming in and thinking, oh, yeah, you know, um, I'm just going to sit here and collect a wage. I don't think it's going to be that with Dabala, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Um, yesterday that- we spoke about we spoke about the fact that him and Poch are both from Argentina um, and obviously Poch and the whole recruitment team will speak to him about the project and what they're looking to build going forward. I just don't see him coming in to be a passenger. I I, I don't see that. Well, I, I can say. see him. Okay. I can see yeah. him well, doing here's the other thing. Here's the other thing yeah. to this too. Like, do you actually think that he fits the profile of a number ten? That's, that's for, my biggest uh, for, question. For uh, yeah. for Pochettino, because I don't think that he work his work rate's that high. Like he worked for he worked under mm. Jose Jose Mourinho last year, and and I mean he played obviously, but like. But this is the thing. Though. This know, is the concern. I don't know if he's a guy that's going to be pressing from the front. A guy that's mm. going to be like you know running through walls and whatnot. Like I I just don't see him that way. You know, this is and... the concern. This is a concern that people have for what's his name, Turkey, Ch- that guy from. Um, I don't. I don't. Yeah, really to be honest, I don't. And, and, and either, Vega. To be honest. And, and, and Vega as well. That that they were the two things that people have been speaking about. Like, yeah, they can create and stuff, but off the ball, they they're not. You know, are they well, going to give you that press from the front? Vega, You're going to get that over a lot Gabby of attacking Vega, shoulders. Gabby Vega's being brought in, in my opinion, to do that sort of that sort of Mason Mount bit. He has got that element to him of working the work rate. From what I've seen yeah. of him, so he's a little bit different to a Dybala or, you know, or a Cherky. I think Cherky's more. I'm not saying Hazard, but driven ability wise, he's got more of that in that role. If that makes sense, he's more of a dribbler, creates space, plays balls in, and whatever. Dybala, on the flip side of it, is someone mm. that will pick the ball up, create for the player in front of him, and also arrive in the box and potentially. Wait, let's it. say okay, let's say might be a bit of Griezmann. Mm. That is the best. Yeah, way yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, let, all right. Let's say, let's say, let's say, yeah. let's say, okay, let's say we brought in, I don't know, a Gabby Vega, for example, um, and then we brought in a Dabala. Would you be op- more open to it then, potentially? I, I look, I'm not overly not, I wouldn't be cry about him coming to Chelsea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't especially be like, oh, because of the amount, especially because of the amount, right? Like, yeah, it's just like it's not amount, a, a yeah. major investment, but no. I, I really think, okay, so when you look at, okay, so Don, and I know how you, how you stay still, so mm. would you? Would you bring in Dabala if it meant um, somebody like Chukomeka or I don't know Medweke have to go on? I don't know, maybe not Medweke. That doesn't make sense. But um, mm. some one of these younger talents that have kind of just started to pierce their way into the lineup. No, 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 I, 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 no, I definitely wouldn't. I, I definitely wouldn't. Hundred percent, I wouldn't. Um, so yeah, we, I, I want Carney to play. Do you know what I mean you guys know how much I like Carney? So I, I wouldn't want to bring in a Dabala to stop Carney's development. But at the same time, I just don't think the baller would come in and be complacent. Like we're not, we're not at that stage in in yeah. in terms yeah. of what we're looking to build going forward. You know what I mean? We're not going to bring in players that that haven't got that commitment and don't want to graft. Do you know what I mean? Mason didn't want to graft. Yeah. So yeah. Wait, wait, I don't see us bringing bring in, in someone that doesn't want to graft. When you bring in the baller, my real question in all of it, I'm kind of all right. Forgetting the money side of it, is where are we going by bringing him in? What is it that we're bringing him to do for now? Is it just a two year contract? Come in, bring a bit of experience with the you know with the the younger players around him, the Madwaki, have some like Argentinian barbecue, have, have yeah, some of that Argentinian flavor mm. in the team with Enzo. Or what I don't know, like is that is that the aim? Because for me, the baller coming to Chelsea is a short term thing. There's nothing yeah. more than that. And you know, and, is he, and he's agreeing to a short term deal at this point in his career, like Wait, is exactly. he agreeing well, to that? Well, exactly. You know, like but, is he coming here yeah. to play for two years and then and then fucking off? I don't know. I I yeah. think his agent could could do a lot better than than getting him a two year deal, and then yeah. and then saying uh, you know at thirty one we have to renegotiate. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't know. I I don't I don't know about that. But uh, to be honest with you guys, I don't even really believe the rumors. So nah, like, more I agree. so yeah yeah that's not, that's, that's so, what it is. <laughs> more so more so more than more so than the player coming and going or or, or not coming. I like, I don't even believe the rumor. I just feel like every time you hear you know you get a new manager, you're always getting linked with players from his the country that he's from and whatnot. And like, how many Argentinians have we been linked with 
yeah, in this window really alone. It's just, it's just, yeah. Yeah. it's just crazy, right? So that's, how, not, that's exactly I'm, how I looked at it. That's why I'm not, I'm not looking any further than 10 million. Okay, low risk. Maybe you'll get a high reward from that. But yeah, you know, in all honesty, boys, I'm not fully against it. I'm not fully against it. I can't lie. Like if it was to bring him in, I wouldn't be, you know, shouting about it. Like I wouldn't be upset about it. Yeah, I, I hear you, but at like, the same time, for the reasons that I've said, it's kind of like ah. Uh... Mm. I think, well, I, think I, def- I think, I think, I think, I think, I think the experience aspect definitely goes a long way, and the fact that he is, yeah, the that, fact, that, that, no, no, that, ironically, that, the fact that he's up from Argentina does yeah. help as well. <laughs> ironically, right. so. You know, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really it's a funny one. It's a funny one. <laughs> what I would say is moving <laughs> on. Though. I mean, look, let's we'll we'll come back to that if it if there is any heat on it. I I think he's going to stay at Roma anyway. But at the same time, we had to speak about it because there was there's a lot of talks in the last week or so about him as well. And like I said, there's no real reliable report that said of it. What Chelsea have agreed, which I forgot to talk about earlier on, is the own the old man air agreement with them, which is our new travel sponsors. Um, which is a good one, Weird. which is obviously a good one for us. Um, obviously, it's not our actual team sponsoring shirt, but we're obviously trying to still work that out. Um, whoever that is, I don't know. I hope it's Allianz, to be honest. That's what I hope it is. Yep, yep. Allianz or, um, or Nintendo. Nintendo looks nice, man. Nintendo looks nice. I can't lie. Well. Yeah, I'm I don't fair. care who it is. It could be Mickey Mouse, man. As long as the peas are right, I'm good. Man. <laughs> I'm good. You know what it is, though? Omen Air. I've seen a few of the um, pictures of people putting Omen Air on the top, yeah? But apparently, we're not allowed to have it on the tops. I don't know why. I don't know why What? Why they're, why they're stopping it, because they stopped us from having Paramount. But, yeah, I don't know what's going on there with, with this top. You know what I mean? I'm glad that it's not state, because, number one, I think it just looks shit. I didn't like it on yeah, Everton's yeah, kit. Do you know what I mean? State, it looks shit. So well, it's, I'm, it's I'm so glad it's not fake. Apart. It's falling apart the deal with stake from what we understand, but we'll see what happens with that a bit later. I want to just quickly go into the, what we have at the moment. Pochettino's obviously have it doing his, his press conference in the next 25 minutes. We'll be finished before that anyway. Um, what's your thoughts on the next captain? Oh, well, lots of talk you're around, looking at him right there. You're looking at him right there. There's a lot. There's a lot of talks around him, uh, Pochettino potentially giving Rhys James the vice captaincy role. And allowing Thiago Silva this season to be captain, I'm, I'm not against that. that. I'm not yep, against that. Um, the reason I said it earlier on was because I think with Reese, I think he needs to find his. I think his availability is key, and I think yep. he needs to go into the next season. If he can go, because again, look, we're not playing as many games next season once a week. Lots of time on the training ground, working on your injuries, strengthening your, your muscles, and whatever. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a lot more time to do all of these things in in time. But I just think. In after the next season, if Thiago Silva doesn't sign, it goes to him, and then my mm-hmm. vice captain would be Enzo Fernandez. That's what yeah, I, I think. I, I, you know what's interesting about captain and the role of captain? I think what is most important is being uh, not just like an on pitch ambassador, but also being a vocal leader. And I'm not sure the only thing about Thiago Silva is I'm not sure that he's shown that yet. You know, I mean, he's an elder statesman. Guys respect him, and he has all of that. But in terms of, like, the guy that, like, is putting his arm around somebody and, like, speaking to them and getting them motivated and whatnot, I'm not sure, I'm not sure he's showed that at Chelsea yet. But it's hard It's hard to – it's hard <laughs> – his fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't ever take him serious when he backs Lukaku yeah, and Aubameyang. Really you know what, though? Like, you see, you see with Silva, one thing I'll say, um, I don't know how strong his English is, but – on the pitch, he does communicate, whether that's using his body language, pointing, shouting, especially when you actually watch him like live as well. You can actually see things off camera. Like he does, he does, um, he is a he is a leader on the pitch. You know what I mean? I, I like I said, no, I don't no, know, no. I don't know about the English side of things because I don't know how strong he is in terms of that, but, but he is a bit of a leader. A, but what to have a strong dressing room, that's what I'm saying though, like mm. all the stuff that you need, the intangibles and whatnot, you need to be vocal. And I don't think that he possesses that. Like yeah. he can barely speak English. He's a guy that is going to have to be the face of the club, like a guy that's going to have to be out in the media a lot, like just mm. out in the public and be that that public figure. And I don't know if he has that gravitas because he doesn't I, speak I, English I well. I, I don't get that. I don't get that perception from him, though, Couch. I don't get the perception from him that 
he's someone that goes into the changing room and isn't one of the main guys, you know, speaking or giving team talks or whatever. I actually think but, I, I think I think it's the opposite. I think I think he does all of that. I think he does. Yeah, all but of that. but it's in such a limit. Even if he does, it's in such a limited way because he's not the best. He doesn't English is not his first language. Yeah, not yeah, even that's his true. Second language. So he, true. He, he when he's giving his message, it's not always going to be as heartfelt because he doesn't have the strongest grasp of the language yet. Yeah, so he'll yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. This is what we need to do, as opposed to like invigorating the the, the dressing room. I don't know. I, mm. I'm I'm speaking in like obviously like, you know, in uh, I'm I'm not I'm not 100 sure that that's what's happening, but that's my impression. In in like terms, yeah. yeah. What I would yeah. say for me, I would feel more comfortable for that exact reason giving it to Reese. But the main reason why I'm skeptical of Reese is again going back to the injury record that Jem just mentioned. Like mm. this is a season where Reese needs to show us that he can stay fit. Obviously, we're bringing in Gusto, so I'm, I'm praying to God that we actually utilise him against certain teams. Because obviously, Poch is all about high intense, you know what I mean, pressing, working hard. So, naturally now, Rhys James should hopefully slip back into his right back natural position. So, he's not bombing up, up and down constantly like a right wing back. Do you know what I mean? We've actually got a winger in front of him who can do that for him. Um, and hopefully, that should help him. So, I think with Rhys, yeah, I think it would make sense for him to be the vice. Silva, if he does get made captain. I highly doubt he's starting a lot of the games this season. I mean, I, I've been saying this for a minute, but it looks like we're probably going to go maybe for Fana, and then you play uh, Badia Shiro or Colwell left centre back, and then yeah, Reese will probably be the captain when when Thiago Silva's not playing. But this is the season for him to prove that he can stay fit. Because one thing you need with a captain, you, you need availability. Do you know what I mean JT was always available? Aspilicueta was pretty much always available. You know, Cahill was always available. Just a, just a few captains that I've gone through there. So having the, um, I don't think just having the armband means you're a leader. I think you look at like someone like Enzo Fernandez last season. I think he will continue it next season. He, he still shouts and gets involved and pushes the team and you know what I mean drives. He, yeah, you know, no, he, there's, there's many there's, there's there's many different aspects that make a make a captain. You know what I mean? Like you you don't have to be shouting all the time. There's different types of captains. Enzo leads by example, and obviously again, he, he does again, he does shout as well. That you guys, I'm hoping that you guys understand that obviously that is clear that you can lead by example that is yeah. obvious and that's mm. what you will get from from tiago silva is why that he wore the tie, the armband this year more often more than a few times anyways but for me going forward no. this no. this dressing room this this chelsea locker room lacks the 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 vocal leader the guy that can be like the galvanizing force the guy that can get in the room and tell you like yo this is what we need to be doing right now be be the on pitch like representation of the manager, be the extension of the manager. Those are the types of things that I think we need to be, we need to have. Some of that can go to the to the referees and be like, no, this is what has to happen here, you know, and communicate that message effectively. Those are these are just this is just the job, like as as a captain. And I I think that that might be lost a bit with Thiago Silva. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying that yeah. he shouldn't be the captain. I agree, he should be, but. I, said, I think I, said I think that's the same. That. They're the same problems you have with Enzo. Like right now, I know I know a few people have Enzo on their shortlist to be captain, but for me, as much as I see him as a leader, I just think that the whole yeah, it's it's important to be able to speak like English to everyone. Do you know what I mean? He's Obviously, he can English, speak Spanish, and we've got he, yeah, he's learning English, which is good. But he, he doesn't speak. Day. He doesn't. <laughs> what? I spoke to me the other day. His English he spoke to Enzo the other day, yeah? yeah. But yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. With Enzo, obviously, um, yeah. Again, it, the the main thing for me it goes back to the to the to the the language barrier there. Do you know what I mean? I, I I've got no doubt that if if um yeah. you know we were a Spanish speaking team all over, that he'll be able to to go in there. But you know, everyone needs to be able to speak English. Do you know what I mean? Um, nothing against Enzo. I'm sure he's learning, but that's that's a key skill you need to be able to do. Like Couch has already yeah. spoken about. But the main thing for me is Reese James. If it wasn't for his injury record, I would have been saying him all day. But I just need him to prove that he can stay fit. That's what it is for me. That's true. Odegaard's a captain for Arsenal. He ain't a specific... And this is why I keep saying He's not specifically like... He leads by example by his performances mm. on the pitch. Not someone that's very vocal. John Terry is... <sighs> You know what that's I mean? what I'm saying. There's there's different so, types of leaders. Like people, you know, you've got you've got your you've got your Tony Adams. Do you know what I mean that used to shout all over the place? There's different types of leaders. There isn't just one type of leader. You can lead, like I said, you can lead by example. Do you know what I mean one thing about one thing about a captain? You need to be consistently given at least seven, eight out of ten a week, performance wise. Do you know what I mean you can't have your captain slacking? So when you look at look at everyone else on the pitch, realistically, it's only Reese that, that's you know been consistent since he's sort of broke through. Silva, we know what we get out of him, and Enzo, really. Um, Chilwell, I can't. No, Sterling, no. 
Like, you can't give that guy the armband as much as he's experienced. Nah, so, re- realistically, yeah, yeah, realistically, yeah, you're looking at James, you're looking at Silva, and you're, you're looking at Enzo. So, I reckon he'll probably be out of reach, James and Silva. I am not putting Kepa catching, mate. Are you having a laugh? Oh, no, no, no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even, I don't like it when, when teams have their keepers as, as, a, as a captain because you're at the back, you're, the, you're at the back end of the pitch. Do you know I mean your captain should be able yeah, to speak yeah, yeah. to everyone? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like with Loris, he probably had to pass information on to the centre backs and, and tell the strikers what to do. You got know what I'm trying I to say? One... So I, I I've never liked it when when um, keepers are captains. I, I hate I know, it. In fact, I know, I know one person that really wants Kepa to be captain of Chelsea, and that's Winter Surfer, isn't it? Kepa, come on. Nah, nah, you're talking about um yeah. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Matt. Man no, like no, Matt. no, don't don't nah, talk, talking, don't talk for joking. Winter Surfer. Got a Winter Surfer, isn't it? Kepa, isn't it? If you, if you if you talk if you're talking about the ship he just bought Chelsea and it's sailing into the ocean, then yeah, sure he is. <laughs> uh, no problem. Um, just to this skipper thing, I, I I'm caught in two minds. Um, I think uh, I sometimes go I lean towards like the international way where they just give it to the best player. Yeah. Really, because I always remember like if you think about Eden Hazard, captain of Belgium, you don't really see him being that vocal. At all, yeah, but the, it's, it's the like respect it's that he carries, though, man. So it's the I respect think it's he like, carries. It's, I always think it's like the best or the most respectful or, or, or something like that. Because all in all, when we talk about a captain, they're not like we're not talking like they're like a cricket captain or a rugby captain or something like that. They they flip a coin and they shout. You know, sometimes, <laughs> but they're also yeah. like. But someone said it before. It's like it's more like a symbol. Of, you know, of them, you know, if they play well, it sort of lifts others around them, sort of thing. But if my cat, yeah. or if they don't play well, and my cat's not playing well, why should I? And yeah. stuff like that. So it, it's really, I, 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 I think it's really important though, whoever Pochettino picks, someone said it previously, so I did apologize, I can't remember who said it. It's really sometimes managers pick the guy who represents them on the pitch. Like, remember with Alex Ferguson? Facts. He chose Roy. He chose Roy Keane because he yeah. was literally his voice on the pitch, and that's yeah. the that's that's the difference. I mean, so I feel sometimes modern day, the modern day captain is just given around like to get a bit. I don't care if like Kepa's been here longer than anyone else. He should never be captain. I don't like goalies as captains in the first place because they're like they're stuck in one position sort yep. of thing. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like. I just, I just wouldn't have that. I mean, we're short of leaders and stuff like that. I mean, I presume it's going to be Thiago Silva just because it's the obvious choice. But remember, there's also like, they've got this weird thing now where there's club captains and then there's captains on the pitch sometimes. No, it's so the club like captain. When, no, that's not exactly how it is. It's club captain. Well, if, and then if you don't play, the, yeah. the, the, the vice captain usually gets the armband for games. Yeah, so, so it was under... Or John Terry, or when John Terry was club captain yeah, and never John played. John Terry was club captain, but Cahill was captain for that season. And the other way around, when it was Cahill's last season under Sorry, it was like Aspilicueta was the captain. Yeah. Sort of thing. Mm. Um, That's what I, I mean, can see happening. Because, yeah, if, if Silva doesn't play, sorry, yeah. sorry, Andrew, if Silva doesn't play as much, then, yeah, if Reece James get, gets made yeah. the vice, the then you're going to see him with the, with the armband. I don't know why people think he's not playing as much. <sighs> <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a, there's only two centre backs you can start, Jim. And again, like Fofana, we've Who? spent all this money on him. We've spent Who? all this money on it. On there's only two. Well, yeah, right. There's there's what Chal- Chalibur, I reckon is going to move on. In all yeah. honesty, I think he's gone. I he's think he's gone. a goner. We're not, not gonna. Do you not? Do you not think though, Don? I think mm. this is Thiago Silva's last year, right? Mm. Yeah. And I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna play a lot, even if we're playing once a week. I think it's an experience thing. He'll be used more on that side and a coaching side, sort of thing. Yeah. With like, especially with someone like Colwell and something like that. And he'll play. He'll play big. I think he'll play the biggest games, Thiago Silva. I think he'll play the biggest games that we play this season in terms of the league and stuff like that in cup. But I can see him sort of not being the first, the first choice. Yeah. You could see yeah. Well, yeah. If I'm being yeah. what you could see. What you could see is rotation. Yeah. I think he still, I think he still plays personally. I think Fafana will come mm-hmm. in. I think it will be a rotation between two. You got to remember, it's one game a week, barring when we play FA Cup Carlin Cups, and that gives us the yeah. twice a week. So, you know, there will be a rotation between it. I just think I, this thing of Silver won't play much. I don't think it's going to be the case. I've been honest with you guys. I well, think, you I, think, I, think, I think they'll be, I think they'll be selective. 
There'll be selective yeah. games, like Andrew said. Yes. I, I think I think there'll be selective games where he does play. But going forward, I think he'll ha- he would have had that conversation with Poch. Maybe even him at this stage. He probably thinks, do you know what? I'm I'm just happy to play when you need me, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? I, I just get yeah, that, that sort of feeling. But I could I could I could be wrong. But I, I just feel like this is his last season. Um, only because again, he's not getting any younger. And you know, uh, again, we've, we've just spent what 80, natural, 80 million on Fofana. Yeah. It's a natural yeah. facing in. I think this season is a natural facing out and facing in when it comes to yeah. sort of someone like a Cole or stays of a facing in more of like uh, Thiago Silva facing out, not completely. Like I said, I think he'll play the biggest games that we have. How are you going to play like, the biggest instance, game? But here's here's the thing I don't understand with that. How are you going to play the biggest games if you're not playing regularly? Like you need to have match fitness in order to play the biggest games. You well, know? No, so I, saying, I don't so necessarily I say, buy that. When I, when I say he doesn't like, I would say when I say he wouldn't play biggest games, doesn't mean he's like won't be on the bench or something, right? So I would say that he would like still come in and stuff like that and be like a sub and stuff like that. Yeah, but that but doesn't talking, happen with center backs. Biggest though. games, like we don't, we, we rarely see center backs get subbed in, right? Like that's that's the thing. So uh, th- this is what I'm saying. If he's playing, I think he's going to get a run of games. And then when he's Rotation. tired, he's going to be out yeah. exactly a run. Yeah, it's so not like, going to be coming for this game and then going for this away. game. And then... I don't see him playing Luton away unless we're injuries or something like that. I see him like well, yeah, but I he wouldn't him... play. But Luton's in not left. in the league, and he wouldn't play the the first few rounds of the. Luton's what, in the league. Caramel they got Cup. promoted. Oh, did they really? They got promoted. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, they well, want to play. Probably play that then. I'll be going to Luton. I think that we have to. Uh, That's listen, right. They did great, get promoted. Greatest years at the age at the age he is. I think there is there has to be some type of plan of moving on from him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but also, these, of... these, these, these players need to gain the experience from him. Cole was meant to be coming into Chelsea, right? And there's a lot of people right. That's that... why. That's why I'm not saying. I'm not saying you don't you don't play him and like you don't keep him around and stuff like that. What I'm saying is, yeah, that no, but I'm just I'm just trying to figure plan. out what. I'm trying to figure player. out what this plan is. Like, I just the think he plays, and I think he'll be rotated. Well, I, don't know. That's the uh, that's the I, I think we'll find rotation. I think we find yeah, rotation, I, I but like the, how you define rotation, rotation yeah. is going to be difficult because for me, especially if you're going to give him, I think the, don't give him captaincy to then not play him a lot and only play him in certain games. That makes sense. If he is going to get captaincy, yeah. if he does, yeah, I think if he if he is confirmed as captain going yeah, into next season, I think he will just continue playing, and then he will just not play some games like he has done. You know what I mean? And just be re re, re sort of reshuffled with Fafano and then Fafano will come in and play and, and whatever else, you know, which is good. We want competition anyway. And even though he is old and I agree, we're going to move him on probably from next season. We still want to keep people wanting, having to challenge for their roles, whether it's a silver there or if it's a blimmin' someone else there, right? So, and that's why I kept saying about the Baddy Shoe and Levi Carwell thing, because a lot of people who like Levi Carwell, and I do, I'm not saying I don't, think he just comes and automatically starts. I don't think he does. I think you look at Baddy Shoe and you look at Levi Carwell, and we've already looked at the stats of both of them earlier on, and you look at their ages and whatever. And I think what we've got there is just general competition between two players. And when they're given the opportunity, will they take it? And that's the way I think Pochettino will, could potentially play this. And I think Cole has to accept that as well. If he's going to sign a contract at Chelsea, come and Absolutely. play the challenge. Push yourself. Get I'll, 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 bet, I'll bet money yeah. I'll bet money at the start of this season, the, the centre-back pairing is going to be Fofana and Thiago Silva. I'll put money on that. And then no, as I, I the agree, season I starts agree. to develop, it's, it's just gonna, it's I, gonna, it's gonna be you know more rotation. Yeah. From there. But it, it, I think we're yeah, gonna start with be, Fana and Thiago. Silva. I think, I think that'll be poor if you have two two young um, left center backs and Thiago Silva is still starting. You know, uh, it doesn't make sense. Well, it's well, the thing first, is, I right? think the Cole conversation is very simple. No. He's not asking. I don't think he's asking to be into the first level he just wants a conversation of what the plan is for him this season just rotation that's just rotate yeah, yeah that's games. fine that, if, he, if, he, if, Poch, if, if Poch says oh yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna see you there I'm gonna give you a chance like, like that I think that's just a normal conversation right that's all it is yeah yeah it's you know? and even if he has even if he has to lie to him just lie to him you know what I mean? competition <laughs> isn't competition isn't forever right so for me the club wanting him to sign exactly. a contract right now when he has three years left you know yeah exactly. it doesn't make that's, sense I, exactly. So, it's like, let's see what you can. I, 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 yeah, you know, here's let your him... chance. We've cleared out. We've cleared. <laughs> Trevor Chalibur's probably going to nah. go as well. So your pathway's even. Kulabari's gone. So your pathway's even clearer. Tiago Silva's probably on his last season. So essentially, you are battling two other players, essentially. 
That's all you're, it's all you're battling. And, and yeah, it's all essentially, it's essentially, really, we were, essentially really won, yeah. right? So this year, you well, can battle, what, yeah. battle Baddy and Chile for it. Whoever loses probably leaves. That's the way battles and go. He, here's like, another thing. You're not going to have them here's battling another, for five years straight. Yeah. Here's another That's thing. True. Pray for us. Pray for us this season so we get more. you get a chance to play more games next season because we want other competitions. So just do that as well. So you're gonna, it's a squad It's a squad game. And then, I'll tell you what, establish yourself. And if you play well, I can't drop you then, can I? Do you know what I mean? Unless it's for injury or just a cup rotation or something. Oh, if you're playing That's shit really for the last... If, 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 you're, if you played shit for the last two games, yeah. just get dropped. Just get dropped and you can bring the next person that's well, there in exactly, for the right? challenge. That's what it should be like, I think. But we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens with with the with the defence and the captaincy. I think the captaincy is going to be key, whether it's Reese James. Oh, fuck it. Give captaincy it. to Levi Cole. Let, 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 <laughs> let me Kepa. <laughs> no, I hope not. Let me know. Oh, man. Um, yeah, unfortunately, our captain, our on-field captain for most games is probably going to be Kepa. And I know nah. people are going to hate that. Nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm nah. trying to, that's going to be the reality. Is he's going to? Uh, he's going to. They're he's actually. Gonna, he's not even in the running just, for captain. Yeah, he's going to listen. He's probably going to be second captain or, or second captain or third captain. But because goalkeepers as a rule, Dan, I just don't like goalkeepers as captains. Exactly, period. it's the worst yeah. decision that you can make. Not even I just for Chelsea, like, just in, no, no, in, in no, no, general. No, no. Listen, listen. Goalkeepers make a goalkeeper for captain. I can't even. Dan, Kepa as, make... as captain is horrible. Like, but listen, Dan, 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 how could you make a goalkeeper a captain that can't even control his own box from corners? I die. <laughs> Think about it. It's true though. Isn't it? Dan can't Think control nothing. How bad? I was like, he can't even control his own. He's not. He doesn't even talk. So many games. How how, how 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 are you going to expect people to listen to you when when you're going to concede? Long shot after long shot after long shot. You're just looking around and you're you're begging, not even begging. You're you're demanding this guy to go and do something. But it's like, hang on a second. Why can't you do your job? But then you're expecting me to do mine. Plus, how do so, you trust his hand? Nah. How do you trust his hand signals with those biscuit ribs? You know what I mean, don't know what's going but on. he's gotten it, guys. Guys, he's gotten it. He's gotten it before. There's rumors yeah, under different management. Nothing. Different under manager. No, no, no. Management. Listen, I'm saying there's rumors right now that he's involved. So, or he's that he might be captain. I'm not even from who. I'm not saying he's going to be main captain, but I've definitely seen being one of the vice captains and and ending up, ending up like kind of like Georgie, right? Where, you know, Aspie was captain, but he, he, Georgie was captain most of the time, really. Because he was, yeah, the, that's because like he was, the, that's because he was the vice captain. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like Kovacic as well. Remember when he, he got it as well? Yeah, that's only because Jorginho yeah. left though, and it was like, oh, who do we actually make captain? But it would have probably gone. I, I, Kepa got probably... it. Kepa got it. Kepa... I think Kepa got it a couple of times. Obviously. I think he started a couple of games as well as captain. Or one, one at least he started. Well, I, I, I better think. not see that shit again. I don't want to see him at the club, let alone as as the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Listen, so well, I, I think, listen. I think it will be. Yeah, I, I think it will be a silver, James. I think I think that's the the, the easy answer in all this when it comes to captains. I get what Dan's saying about Kepa, maybe a third captain or whatever. Maybe I, you know that. I get it. I do get it because he's had it before. You know, this this whole Anana thing has annoyed me a little bit. The fact that we've uh, allowed it looks like he's going Man United. Um, maybe maybe that's because he we don't look as goalie spending that much on the goalkeeping position because we want to use that for a striker. I don't know, but we need to see that, right? Because once you get Caicedo in, there's still other things to do. It's just what do they prioritise as being ah, the next Screw Inter, Jim, like, man. Inter, 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 such, you know. Trying Lukaku, to get the Lukaku yeah, on the cheap for another loan, fucking thing, yeah. and then like pricing, like they're gonna price out for another. No, screw him, man. Screw him. You know what I mean? I'm sick of <laughs> dealing with Inter, man. It's just uh, we have a better relationship with AC Milan. We have a better relationship with AC Milan. We do. We should send him to AC mm. Milan. That's what we should do. Then we'll put him up gone. like that. Put just, put yeah, see, that's what that's what I was saying to um. Uh, Couch, remember the conversation that we had about Pulisic? I'm glad that he's humbling himself because I, 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 yeah, right I, expe I expected him. I expected him to do this because he, he he's not at that stage where he's going to just sit down and collect a wage. He needs to play. Do you know what I mean? He's, well, he's still in, he's still a opinion, big marketing name. You know, in my opinion, I think he's making the wrong decision just based on this. And the reason why I say it is that he's going to basically walk into another team where he's going to have to fight for his place. He's taking mm -hmm. lower wages. In the prime of pretty much approaching his crime, taking lower wages, fighting for his position, where he could leave next year on a free and then decide where his fate can go rather than who can afford him, essentially. So 
I don't know. Uh, that's, yeah, but that's, that's that, that could, it could be a massive risk for him, though. Position, yeah, it could yeah. be. Could be. That would be yeah, that would be a big risk. If you think, if you think about it, he's definitely not in the plans, right? And this guy can be, can barely even stay fit. So there's no guarantee that if he sticks around, uh, and, doesn't get any game time, that a team like Milan will even come in for him. Do you I know mean, what I mean? Also, also, even also, Leon. I think, I think also, here's, here's the most here's important the, here's point. The couch. Here's the here's the park couch. So number one, he starts in Milan. Milan competes for league titles. You know what I'm saying? Pulisic. He's got no right. Who's he replaced? Who's he replaced? He'll probably start on the right. He's going to start on the right. He's not going to start over Leal, obviously. Leal's king. Yeah. But they've got he's no gonna... right wing. That's why they always go down the left. Yeah, they are, they're, looking gonna... at, they're looking at that guy from, what's his name? Um, Valencia, man. Uh, um... What's his so name? The guy that starts with a C. Yeah, they're looking at him as well. They're building yeah, a little. No, they're yeah. building a nice little attacking squad there. You know, I think they're it's building a nice Kukunza little attacking squad. Him, but either way, he goes there. He starts. He gets his comp. Like I think he just needs his confidence of playing every single game in a slower league. I think he'll cook there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see that. Yeah. The, like one one more year on Chelsea's bench, playing here or there. You know what I mean? Getting. I mean, know he cares about the social media, the media, the fans, all that. Getting abused every every. There's no point in doing that. Yeah, yeah, there's no point at all. Not getting right. anything. Why even? Why even do that? Just leave. But two things, right? Yeah, yeah. Said it in this first interview. First interview. Don't want you know. Um, uh, paraphrasing it, but you know, doesn't want people that don't want to be here. Right? Doesn't want to work with them. So he doesn't want to be here. You get rid. Not you don't waste a year letting them do whatever they want to do and stuff like that. And also mm. you're forgetting, he's got to re-release that book with the Chelsea chapter. You know what I mean? The new paperback version. So he's got to write all that. I'm just saying this. So I'm just saying say, this. No, no, <laughs> you, go to you, you know, no positions locked. I would say like everyone has an opportunity to fight for their position, fight for their place. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I've been talking about pretty much the entire off season. Like fight for your place. If I'm, too, if I'm Pulisic, I'm putting my head down. Like, like we saw Christensen do, like we saw uh, Rudiger do. I'm putting my head down and I'm fighting for my place. And yeah, then exactly. when it comes time to negotiate a deal, I have the world as my oyster. I can go, okay, well, I don't need to, I don't need to be pandering to this, you know, taking less wages. I don't need to pander to this whoever can afford to pay 25 million pound or whatever. I'm looking at who isn't what is that, the best situation for me. And yeah, it's, but if, it's, hmm. it's, it's just that, whether or not you think that he can fight for his position. The thing is, yeah. chapters just come to an end sometimes. Like Pulisic has been here. A lot, a lot of his Chelsea career, a lot of his Chelsea career has been stop, start, stop, start, injuries, yeah. injuries. And now he's part of that crop that you know, he might not be the, one of the toxic ones that was leaking things and that, but he is part of that crop that we've just kind of looked at and aren't going to take us to that next level. They're, they're not bringing what, what it takes to be a Chelsea player. Do you know what I mean? It's, they're not bringing what it takes to I, win the I major trophies. Do you know what I mean? So I think with I him, he's probably going to look at it like... Sorry, sorry, Andrew, let me just finish my point, bro. Um, He's yeah. probably just looking at it thinking, do you know what? It's just time for a change now. It's actually just time for a change. Like, yeah. this, the, the season that just went was, was, was the time when... You, what you're saying is true. Like, put your head down, graph for it. But he ended up getting injured again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think on both sides, it's just time. Like, time's up. Do you know what I mean? You've had enough chances that now. Should be, time is up. That should be... Comm- I feel you. He should be commended. As, he should be commended as well. You don't want to stay here. Try and get get out. And opportunities arise. He's trying to get out. And that should be commended. Yeah. I'd rather someone do that than, like, sit around and... Or, like, or like put extra demands on the club when he's trying to leave. But like, I'm only going this place. So I'm going. And I think that's fine. I think... Listen, we're talking about last year of his contract. It, his his value's not that high. I think, I think we're getting something like over twenty, like twenty two million euros or something like that. He is, you know, he's not favoured. I just think it's a good deal. AC Milan, they're but they're a big club. Do you know what I mean he's going to go play with Ruben? He's going to go play with Tomori. Are, you've got you, you've got Tomori there as well. This season, <laughs> they sold Tonali yeah, and they're Ruben. reinvesting this season to go for Serie A title him. So. They're in the That's Champions League as well, isn't it? They're, they're playing Champions League football, football next season, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's that as well. There's that as well. So, and, and Milan, from what I've heard, Milan's a nice team. Someone said it. Someone said it. It's Guys, a I want to, um, I want to shoot because the press conference on for Poch as well. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get over there and watch that. I know Prime, Prime, you always come in lastminute.com, mate. I can't do nothing about that, unfortunately, bro. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> big up, big up every single one of you guys as always. Big love. It's been a good little show. We will hopefully have more Caicedo news next uh, next time round anyway. So we'll see what happens next week on that. And anything else that happens in between that, obviously we'll come back to you with the thoughts. But a good little show as well, guys. Nearly done two hours. Talk to you in a bit. Go over to the Poch first um, interview as well, which is going to be happening anytime now. Interview, press conference, sorry. 
Hey, 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 Jim, Jim, yeah. what's the, what's the, what's the timing of the first mount question? Do you reckon? Or do you reckon how many minutes in minute the press 50. conference until he gets the first mount? <laughs> uh, five seconds in. I mean, Mount didn't hold back yesterday, did he? Yeah. By saying that we weren't in his play, he Chelsea wasn't in his play. What the spot? So anyway, we'll move. On. I ain't mad, Guys, Dad. Anyway. I ain't mad, Dad. He, he realized he wasn't in the plans. He was coming off the bench. It wasn't in the See plans you, because he probably wasn't getting the 275k week that Man United decided to give him, and Chelsea didn't want to give him. So yeah, we move nah, on. He's not in the plans yeah, because guys. he ain't, he ain't getting no he ain't getting See no start position anymore. Take care, take care, take care. Big love.